We're beginning the cat burglar game. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Multimedia Fusion 2. I'm going to let that open. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go, go click my new button. There we go. I'm going to rename this application one. And I'm going to call this um, cat burglar. I'm going to rename this one game. So now I'm going to open up my frame view. Double click on this here. I'm in frame view. Click on the game. Make sure so that the settings comes up. Now I'm going to choose my background color right here. Click red, green, blue. And I'm going to choose my background color. So now I'm going to add a folder to the library. So I'm going to turn my library on. Click View, Toolbars. Make sure I've got that click in the library window, the first three in the library window, the only ones you need to have on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a folder to the library. So under CD-ROM, I'm going to right click, then click New. Then I'm going to uh, find my game design folder. We're in project three and we're going to open up the cat burglar library. I'll click that OK. So now I, over here I just call that cat burglar library. So now I'm just going to open my cat burglar library and click that. Double click this. I can look at any object. I can right click the maze, let's say. Right click and view it. And that will show me what that looks like, okay? So now I need to save my product project. I click the Save button. I come up, go to uh, by Project 3. And I'm going to call this Cat Burglar. Okay, we're in lab two, so the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cat to the play area. So I'm just going to drag the cat onto the air, play area. So now I'm going to click the cat, and I'm going to add movement to the cat. See it's static? I'm going to click and move the eight movements to that. Remember what the eight movements are? That is for your arrow keys on your keyboard, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a maze to the play area. So I'm going to click on the maze. I'm going to drag it up here. I'm going to right click on the maze. I'm going to go align and frame, vertical center. Click again, align and frame horizontal center. Now if you'd like you can lock it. You can right click and click lock. So now that that won't move. I'm going to put my cat at the um, entrance right down here actually. So now we're just going to uh, run the program, the application right now, show you what that cat can do. So we're just going to move anywhere we want to. See the cat can go right through the walls. We're going to fix that in a minute. But just want to show you that eight movement so you guys remember it. Okay. So I'm going to close this out. 
So now I'm going to do a collision condition for when the hat, cat hits the maze. So I'm going to go view. I'm going to go to the event editor. And I click new condition. And I'm going to click the cat. Right click the cat object. Then click collisions with another object. That object is going to be with the maze. I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to make the cat stop when it hits the maze. I'm going to right click the cat. I'm going to go movement and stop. When the cat hits the maze, it's going to stop. So now let's test our game. We'll go run application. And see, we can't, we can't make that cat do anything against the walls of the maze now. Okay? He stops. Just what we wanted to happen. So now before we move on to lab 3, make sure that your game frame is a cat and the mouse positioned correctly. The maze is lined up with the edges of the play area. The cat is in the bottom lower corner of the maze. Make sure the cat moves when you press the arrow keys. Make sure the cat can't move through the walls of the maze and save your project. Now in lab 3 we're going to go back to the play area. So we're going to go view, frame editor, and we're going to add keys to the play area. So I'm going to click the key here and I'm going to put it over here. Put one key over here. Come on up. Put a key over here and a key over there. Now I'm going to create the steps that destroys the key when the cat collides with them. So I'm going to go do what? I'm going to go back into the event editor. I'm going to click new condition. I'm going to click the cat. Right click, collides with another object. Another object is going to be the key. I'm going to click OK. Now to the key column when the cat collides with a key. So something's going to happen to the key, right? So underneath the key I'm going to right click and I click destroy. So now the key is going to go away when I do that and we'll check it out. I click run application. So we're going to move that cat and we're going to check it out. Make sure that the key just is just destroyed, not the cat. You know, some of you guys have been having trouble with this. There you go, it works. So the next thing we add is a ruby and a treasure chest to the play area. So I gotta go back to the event editor. I mean to the frame editor. So I go view, frame editor. So now I'm gonna come up to up, come up here. Put the ruby up there first. So that's the last thing that's gonna be there. Click the ruby here. And right on top of it, I'm gonna put the chest. So the chest is gonna go away and reveal the ruby. So what we're gonna have happen next. Uh, what we're going to have happen next is when all the keys are destroyed, that it'll open up the chest, right? So now we're going to have a condition where there's no keys left in the play area. So I'm going to go View, Event Editor, click New Condition, and this time it's with the key. Right click Key, and now I'm going to uh, select Picker Count. And then click Have All Keys Been Destroyed. Okay, so now I'm going to create these steps to create a condition that destroys a chest object and the last key has been destroyed. So now the last key has been destroyed. What happens to the chest? We destroy, we, uh, destroy the chest. So I'm going to right click the chest and I'm going to click Destroy. So this ends lab three. Complete these steps to make sure your project's on track. Be sure there's a key in all each of the four open areas of the maze. Make sure the keys are destroyed when the cat collides with them. Make sure the ruby is hidden under the treasure chest when the game starts. 
and the treasure chest disappears when all the keys are collected. Save your project. Saved often.